Hey guys, welcome to the lesson. It is a bonus lesson. We are making the 2020-2021 Tokyo Olympics torch. Um, as I'm making this, it's right before the opening ceremonies, and I thought it'd be fun to kind of look at it. A couple facts about the Olympic torch. It was made in 1936 for the first time, and every single Olympics since then has had its own unique design. Um, this year is really cool. It's based off a of cherry blossom, so it's five... Um, circular objects around or leaves around a center which is where the flame comes up and we're going to kind of walk through these as best that we can it's a little bit of a complicated shape it's not really too bad um, but it's a great opportunity for us to learn a little bit and so let's go ahead and get started so what you're going to need here is a work plane so go ahead and pull that out and get it set right remember uh, i just have my view set a little different over here on the right hand side is where my uh, boxes are and go ahead and draw out a cylinder so when we look at the olympic torch you'll see that it has a a curved top right and now i could bevel this here in tinkercad i could give myself a nice smooth item uh, to work with here just a nice bevel cut but i don't need to do that because we are going to use uh, we're going to make this cylinder and we're going to turn our sides up um, here so I'm gonna crank my sides to 64 but we're gonna use an object to make another object to take away um, from this object and so you'll see what I'm talking about here in a second so go ahead and place your your cylinder to the side for a second and we need to make the the rig that we're gonna use to cut so br I'm gonna bring out a sphere I'm gonna also up its steps as well just so I can get as clean and smooth of an item as I can Now, once we have our box out, okay, we need to think about how we're going to connect these two in order to get the shape that we want. And what we need is we really need a box that is one fourth of the circle. And so that we get that curve and can use that curve to cut off what we need over here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring these two and I'm going to align them on the side. And then I'm going to make this box half as tall. Okay. And then I'm going to align them again at the top. And so now what you'll see is that we have a box that is half the size of the circle. And really, actually, I could just do this. I'll bring it in half the width and use the align tool again to bring them half of my circle. Okay. Now, because of uh, we want an even, we don't want a domed shape, we want an even curve, we need to make our circle a little wider. So instead of making it 20, I'm actually going to make it 60. And then I'm going to realign. And this should give me a nice, you'll see I'm, I'm getting most of the curve here, which is what I want. Okay, just to review, we have brought a circle out. We have made the box one half height and one half width. We aligned to get them into this position. And now we are going to make the circle into a hole and we are going to combine them. Okay, all right, so now that I have my, um, now that I have my cutter in place and I have my cylinder in place, I need to make my cut and prepare to make the first petal in my lotus blossom. So, lotus blossom, cherry blossom. So I'm going to align here. Whoop. First off, what I need to do is I need to make this width, uh, I need to make it 20 by 20. So you'll click here, see this, make this 20 by 20, and now, now the cut will cover the whole, the whole piece, okay? So we're going to combine those. You'll see that we get a nice little bevel here, and um, now we need to add the hole on the inside. Now that we have cut the shape that we want, I'm going to make the hole in the middle. So I will click on my item, duplicate it, I'm gonna drag out this item really quickly, make it a hole, make it a little bit taller as well. And then I wanna make it 19 by 19. And what this allows us to do is I know that I'll have a uniform thickness of the cut throughout my entire item. So now I'm going to realign, middle, middle. Join. And as you can see, we have a nice even cut around. We have our bevel on top and there's only one more thing we need to add. 
Good job getting the piece here, guys. And now we're going to go into the final steps, which is putting the panel on the back side. This is actually a two part because as you can see here, it kind of tapers in and then goes up. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna bring out a box and make it four wide. Then I'm gonna use our line tool to bring it in the middle and together and use our arrow keys to just make sure I'm only cutting the part I want. And then finally to get the uh, kind of tapered look that I'm looking for, I'm gonna bring out a paraboloid, which is this white dome piece here. Use shift to bring it down to four, six, and make that a hole, sorry. Make it 15 high. And then middle and back. Now all I gotta do is use my arrow keys to bump it over a little bit. I'm just gonna make this eight. Yeah, and join. And now that we've got that joined, you can see it may be a little, uh, it, Remember, when we bring this up, it's going to exaggerate some, which is the, the look I'm looking for. And so go ahead and bring this up. I'm going to bring it up to actually 100. Uh, I'm going to scale it back down in a little bit, but I just want this. I like this nice, even height. This feels tall. This feels regal. This is exactly what we're looking for. Once you have the outside leaf, the height that you want, which is 100, you're going to need to uh, duplicate and rotate. And since this is around a circle, we are going to need to rotate each one of them 72 degrees. Uh, so let's go ahead and duplicate. And then I'm going to do my best to try to get this to do it automatically. I'm not sure if it will. We can always adjust it. The main thing is that we rotate it 72 degrees. Okay. Now that we have our five pedals done, what we want to do is move those out of the workspace and we can move on to our next item, which is the handle. The handle has a slight bevel in it and we want to try to model that as closely as we can. So what we're going to need is we're going to need a cylinder that's normal size, so 20 by 20 by 20. And we're going to make this circle also 20 by 20 by 20. So go ahead and adjust that. The next adjustment that you'll want to make outside of the normal cylinder is to make the sides of it 36. So once you have all that prepped and ready to go, first thing you want to do is raise up your cylinder, go underneath and place the work plane on the bottom. Next, rotate the half circle so that it is 180 degrees. Align the two items so that they are directly on top of each other, so middle and middle. Now, occasionally, for some reason, there might be some clipping and it doesn't exactly work. It's very easy to fix, and that's why we've moved the work plane. Just drop down the half circle and then hit D on the keyboard. It'll realign perfectly. So now we want to group our two items together. And we see that once we move the work plane, it becomes one solid item. The last thing we need to do is to continue the bevel. So go ahead and ungroup them real quick. You're going to want to drop it down so that it is negative 10 below the work plane. Okay, you're then going to want to change the sizing of the, both sides to 15. Realign in the middle. And you're going to want to make this a little longer. So I'm bringing it up to 40, around 40, and then dropping it back down. Remember, it's inside, so it doesn't match. It doesn't have to match perfectly. Uh, you're just trying to get a good, solid shape. Now that we have that, all we have to do is to raise up our torch, realign it with these items over here. I'm going to go to the top view. I'm going to go back in the orthographic view here in a second so that I can make sure I have everything I need. Yeah, that looks good. And then I'm going to lower this back down. Click on the white edge. and realign. This should make it so that you're, and if it's not perfect, it's, 
You may have to play with it a little bit to get back in, but 15 is the correct sizing on both of these, on uh, both sides of the circle here. Go back, check your item. That looks pretty good to me. We're going to group it up. Hey guys, uh, so I went to bed last night thinking I was done with this and realized that the bottom portion has a taper on it, which you can see here on the picture. And so we're going to clean that up real quick. It's really not that difficult to do. So the last thing we have to finish up with is we want to place a work, place on the work plane on the bottom of our cylinder. Then we're going to come in with another paraboloid, place it on here. You're going to have to rotate 180 and raise up so that it is at zero. So you'll need to raise up negative 20 because the work plane is upside down. It, it gets there. So once you have your paraboloid raised, you're going to make it 80 meters tall and we're going to make the bottom portion 30 by 30. Turn it to a hole and then just using your arrow keys Bring it in so that it intersects with the cylinder. Uh, you can go to the top view to kind of get you a good view on this. Yeah, you want you want it to be touching almost. You want it to be as far as you can go on this side without clipping the other cylinder. So this this looks like it right here. Okay. So what I would do at this point, I would actually duplicate the I would actually duplicate this and set it over to the side. Because uh, you want the cuts to be the exact same, and we're going to do the others by hand. So just set it over here, and then join these two items so you know what they look like. That right, looks like I was off. So if you see that you're off just a little bit, you just want to adjust using the arrow keys. It may take a couple times to play with. But that looks much better. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and do the other four circles. We'll come back when I'm done. Hey guys, uh, thanks for coming on the list with me. Excited with it. Today's actually the opening day for the Olympic ceremonies. So we're going to watch that tonight. Looking forward to it. Hopefully you saw it when it happened. Um, Again, like sometimes you have to come back on models and you wake up in the middle of the light and realize that something's missing and that happens. And so that's the nice thing about Tinkercad is it saves your items for you. So always make sure you're naming things correctly. I don't usually talk about this, but up here I did a bad job of shiny Naris uh, Robo. I'll, I need to change that and I will. Um, just so you can find stuff because the more stuff you make, the harder it is to find. But anyway, hey, like and subscribe. It does help. Let me know in the comments what you'd like us to make in the future. Thank you for joining us on this bonus episode, and we'll talk to you soon. Bye.